Have you ever sat down and thought to yourself why you use the editing software that you use? I mean, really dig into the specific reasons why. And after using Capture One for, I guess, the past maybe four plus years now, my reasons have they've shifted a bit over time. And in this video, I want to share with you the five main reasons why I originally switched to Capture One in the first place and why I continue to still use it to this day. And I rated the following reasons in order of uh, personal importance to myself, with the very first reason why as the most important reason I stay with Capture One. And while I was preparing for this video before my recent trip to Spain, I decided to reach out to Capture One to see if they'd be interested in sponsoring this week's video, and they happily obliged and even provided a 30-day free trial with a link in the description along with a coupon code for 20% off your first purchase. So a big many thanks to Capture One for sponsoring this week's video. So to jump right into it, the very first reason or the original reason I switched to Capture One quite a few years ago now is because I heard so many good things about the raw processing power or stated differently, the conversion engine inside of Capture One. And I got a couple really cool examples I'm about to show you. One captured with um, using Sony raw files and the other using Fuji raw files. But the conversion engine is basically what is required and, and every editing platform has a conversion engine because when your camera captures a raw photograph, it's not really capturing a photograph, it's capturing data or capturing information that needs to be decoded or transcoded into an actual image that you can edit on your computer. And every editing platform does this a little bit differently and after years of using the most popular editing platforms out there, I believe that Capture One definitely has this down to, to a, a science the best. And here is a, a quick example of that. So this is a, a Sony RAW file right here and using two different editing platforms, one on the left and one on the right. And then this is Capture One in the center here. And what's happening is when you import your RAW files into your editing platform, all of this conversion engine wizardry is happening under the hood. It's all invisible, like behind the curtains, if you will. And then when you see the file on your computer and you start to edit it, or you see the photo on your computer and you begin to edit it, that conversion engine process has already been completed. But when you import it into Capture One, it just looks a little bit different. Like I said, these are other two um, popular editing platforms on the left and right, and this is the Capture One file here. And these are completely raw images. There's nothing done to these photographs. But if you look at the water right through here, comparing these two, the water is just a little bit more saturated, a little bit more vibrant. The Capture One conversion adds a, or kind of, I guess the way it transcodes or decodes the, the information, I don't know the, the secret sauce involved here, but the images just come out with a little bit better contrast. The colors look a little bit better. You can definitely tell right through here on each of these three examples that the Capture One just has the, just the colors have a little bit more richness to the tones and the contrast is a little bit better. And those are the things that really step out to me or jump out to me. Now here's another example here using a Fuji RAW file. So this is the uh, Fuji RAW file um, inside of Capture One. And then this is the other two editing platforms. And as you can see, if you look at the water up here, the water definitely has a little bit more kind of that, that deeper uh, blue tone to it. The sand is definitely different. And if you look at these two examples compared here, and there's just a, a, a richness in the colors that come out of the Capture One and the contrast. And the, you know, I can see it in the Fuji RAW file as well. I wish I had a Nikon and a Canon RAW file to compare this to, but I only have Sony and Fuji. But I think you would agree that the colors definitely look a little bit better and the contrast is a little bit better as well. You can see how much kind of darker the, this area is on the other editing platforms versus Capture One. So. What's really cool about it, that's just something that happens in the very, very get-go. It's before you ever even move a slider, I feel like Capture One autom automatically kind of gives you a, a leg up in the, the editing department, if you will, before you ever even start to, uh, to edit anything. So the second reason why is the advanced color editor tool. Now, I'm sure if you talk to anyone who's used Capture One, one of the very first things they talk about is the, the, the color options, the, the power behind the, the color editing tools inside of Capture One are vastly superior to other editing platforms. And, I, and I'd have to, do, have to agree that Capture One really does hit it out of the ballpark when it comes to, to color editing. Now, I could make multiple hour long videos all about the color editing tools, but I just wanna run through a couple of the things that I find most beneficial and things that I think that you would find most beneficial as well. So the color editor tool, if you come over here to color editor, you have this basic area here, hue, saturation, lightness, 
uh, Capture One calls uh, luminance lightness, but it basically is the same thing. But if you come over here to the advanced tab, this is where I think a lot of the magic happens. So you, you have this kind of empty thing here, this empty circle, uh, you click on it, nothing's happening. But if you click on this and you highlight that little color picker, and let's just pick a color here, this green area, it's automatically going to select that color here on the color wheel, which is indicated by that dot. And of course we can increase the saturation of that. We can increase the, the, uh, the lightness of that. But what is really, really helpful here is one, you can select this little checkbox here, view selected color range, select that. And only the color that you selected is going to have, is, only, is going to be colored. Everything else is going to be in black and white, which really makes editing specific areas of your photograph that much easier. So we can increase the the lightness of that area. We can increase the saturation of that area if we want. We can shift the hue more towards um, orange and yellow or make it more green. But what else is really, really neat and what I find this is most helpful for that I'm about to show you is determining whether or not you've oversaturated colors. And it's this right here. So this little box on the left, this is the original color. And this is the way the color looks now. So we went from here to here. And that's a pretty drastic change. And this is kind of what I look at when I'm trying to determine whether or not I've oversaturated a color. If that difference between what it originally looked like and what it looks like now is a huge disparity, there's a good chance I might have uh, oversaturated that. And why I think that's so beneficial is because it's one of the most difficult things to see is whether or not you've push saturation or overall vibrance of certain areas of your photograph too far. There's not a really good tool to determine that. I think this is by far the best tool I've ever seen is being able to see that before and after of that specific color. So now that I can see what a huge difference that is, I'm going to bring that saturation way down and you can see how that's changing now a little bit. See, still a big difference here. I'm going to bring this down to maybe about right there. And now that's starting to look a little bit better and I can toggle this on and off. So before, and after, before, and after. So I think that that looks pretty good. Let me come up here and I'm gonna create a, uh, an adjustment layer, whoops, a new field adjustment layer. And let's label this color. I'm gonna do this again, but this time let's pick a color up here in the sky. And you can see that it selected that color right there. We can saturate it a touch. And once again, we can see this is where the color started. This is where we're at right now. I can bring that saturation way up and you can see the difference there. Obviously that's too much. We can turn off the view selected color range if we want to see all the colors. I kind of like editing like this. It just kind of helps me to not get distracted by all the other colors in the scene and really enables me to focus on only the color that I'm specifically editing at that moment. So if we want to increase the lightness, we definitely can do that. And maybe we want to get away, get away from that purplish tone. So if we shift it more like this, it's kind of got more of a blue tone to it. Now let me kind of turn this off because I want to match it to the rest of the photograph. So maybe something like this. And once again, you can kind of see that the difference between where we started and where we're at right now is not a massive difference before and after, before and after. I'm just doing this really, really quickly, but you can see how powerful that is. And to take it a step further, this is another part that I use a lot too. If you hit these three little dots, we're going to do create mass layer from selection. This will take a couple seconds. And what it did is it made a mask up here. Let's label this color mask. And now this is only impacting that area that we were targeting originally. So I can come over here to say exposure. And if I want to increase that area, you can see, you know, I'm just showing you here. If I wanted to add some contrast to that area, I definitely can. So it created a mask for that specific color that we were already editing. And now you can apply any adjustment to it that you want. If you want to come down here to clarity and you want to add some clarity, to that specific region, you definitely can, or maybe you want to soften it up. The, uh, the sky is the limit, but being able to create a mask quickly based off of the color that you were editing is super, super helpful. Now, the third thing is something that, and this is a big thing for me, and I don't hear it talk, spoken about a lot, I should say, and it's right here. If I come down here to, uh, oh, it's already highlighted, in the exposure section, it's the brightness slider. So let me come over here to the background layer. You can see that I have the brightness slider up. And a common question is, what's the difference between brightness and exposure? And the easiest way to think about it is exposure impacts your entire histogram, all the way from the black point, all the way for the to the, the uh, white point on the right side. So it impacts everything. And the exposure slider can be a little bit harsh sometimes, but the brightness slider is much more smooth and it really just impacts the overall midtones of an image. This is a really easy way to, uh, to show this. So I'm gonna come over here to curve. And this is what I'm about to show you is going to really mimic 
what the brightness slider does. So it's, it's as if you took a midpoint here and just drug it up to a point like this. You can see that the, the black point is the same, the white point is the same, but all the midtones of this line right here, this is what is being lifted. And that, in my opinion, is a much more easy or much more kind of sensitive way to brighten a photograph. It's just not quite as harsh as exposure. Let me just uh, reset this. But I oftentimes will use pretty much all brightness to increase the overall exposure of my photograph and maybe just a touch of exposure as you can see right here. So having a dedicated brightness slider I think is very, very handy and something that I really enjoy inside of Capture One. Now the fourth tool or fourth reason, fourth thing that I really enjoy is that the fact that there's layers inside of Capture One. And it's not just the fact that there's layers, it's the fact that you can change the opacity of these layers. And what's really handy is like, if I come up here to the sky layer, if I toggle this on and off before and after, before and after, and I have this highlighted, you can see all the different adjustments that are made to this sky layer. So I don't have to go in here and change the exposure or the contrast or the brightness slider or the saturation to make a change to that sky edit. I can just come up here to opacity and I can just lower the overall opacity of that. And as I rock this back and forth, you can see with this value right here, this is the opacity of this layer, being able to swing this back and forth so whenever you see one of these layers is a little bit overdone, you don't have to go in and, and change every single adjustment associated with that layer. You can just change the opacity of that layer. And that's super, super helpful. Helps you stay organized, it saves you time. And it's just a, a much better way to, um, to edit specific areas of your photograph that might be a little bit underdone versus areas that might be a little bit overdone. Now, the last and certainly not least reason why I uh, continue to use Capture One is the fact that they have levels. So I'm gonna close down exposure here. I'm gonna come over here to the levels section. Now, if you're not familiar with what levels are, it's a, it's a, it's a great additional, I should say, add-on feature that really complements the tone curve, in my personal opinion. It's a great way to, to brighten an air, a, uh, a photograph. It's a great way to reduce exposure of a photograph. It's an amazing way to add contrast or reduce contrast in an image. And having levels as a part of, uh, of Capture One is, is a great benefit. So if you're not super familiar with what this is, this is, you know, you're, you're representing your black point. This is representing your, your white point. If I move this over, I'm basically saying that the black point is now this part in the image. If I bring it all the way over here, I'm now saying that the black point is this part of the photograph. I usually don't move the black point a whole lot because I don't like a true black point in my photographs. I like my black point to be a little bit softer. So I usually will barely move this at all. But as, after I move the white point, over a little bit, you can see that it's starting to get a little bit brighter. So I can move this all the way over here. You can see what that's doing. I can take this middle part here. I can reduce that exposure now if I wanted to, or I can brighten it up. It's just an extremely, extremely powerful tool in an amazing way, like I mentioned, to impact exposure, whether you're increasing exposure, decreasing exposure. If I want to add a lot of contrast, I can come over here and bring this over. I can bring this side over as well. Bring this back some. And if I toggle this back and forth, you can see that's before and after, before and after. And that's another amazing tool of levels. And there's a lot of things that you can really do with levels. And it's just a, a very powerful tool, similar to the tone curve. There's a hundred different things you can do with the tone curve. There's also a hundred different things you can do with the level section and having that a part of it, of Capture One. It's just one of those things that just makes it an overall super robust editing platform. So I hope that was a, a real kind of quick deep dive over the uh, the five main reasons why I switched to Capture One many years ago and why I still continue to use it to this day. It's an extremely, extremely powerful editing platform. And these are the features that I think really kind of sets it apart from other editing tools out there and things that I think that you might enjoy as well. So if you have any questions about anything covered in this video or any questions about Capture One, please leave those in the description or in the description in the comments section below and I'll do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as possible. And as always, thanks so much for spending a little bit of time with, uh, with me today. If you enjoyed this week's episode, if you could give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you checking out this week's video and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.